as I set out to understand dogs more so that we could help them to live in harmony in our human society. One area that's often overlooked but I found essential to know about was the development stages of a dog from birth right the way through. When they're born, they're not a blank canvas. They come with sort of instincts and senses that guide the rest of their lives. But they need to be taught along the way. They will go through their vulnerable stages, their gullible stages, their naivety. It's all natural. And once they get to a certain stage, they are building on that experience. And that's in their natural world. So when we take them from that natural world and put them into our world, it's important that we do understand how this happens. When I first started, I truly believed that for every human year, a dog had seven. Everybody thought that way, and who was I to say differently? But I'm so glad I looked deeper, because what I found was, and to my surprise, was that for their first human year, a dog is actually growing to that of a 16-year-old human equivalent. So their second year, slightly less, which makes them around 25. And as their human tick-off years go by, their development slows up. And that's how somebody had arrived at taking the average of these and coming up with seven. And we humans tend to be a bit lazy and we get that, that that's near enough, but it's not. We have to know because we're living with these animals, we want to help them. And on one occasion, uh, when I was in Yellowstone, it was May, and I think it was 2007, I happened to be in the Northern Territory and we came across some wolves around a herd of elk. Of course, we're keen to see how a hunt would develop most of them fail, but that's not the point. It was just to see the interaction between the animals and their prey. And I was with Rick McIntyre, who happens to be somebody who knows quite a lot about the wolves in Yellowstone. And as I was setting up my scope to view at a distance, he said to me, I want you to focus on a tree, shadow. Now, at that moment, I must admit, I thought, hmm, tree shadow okay but I trusted him so I set my scope up and I watched and I could hear other people saying oh the elk are moving or the walls are moving and I'm watching a shadow but I stayed with it and I'm so glad I did because all of a sudden from that black shadow broke two black walls they raced out and as I sort of came off the scope, thinking I'd seen what Rick wanted me to see, he said, stay on the shadow. So I did. I'd just seen two fully grown wolves come rushing out. But I stayed on the shadow. And about 10 seconds later, another black wolf, bigger set, heavier set, just slowly strolled out of the shadow shook itself and wandered away. By now, the elk had gone, the wolves had scattered, everything was over. And Rick turned to me and said, you have just witnessed a training run, a teaching lesson for the youngsters. Bing, that went into place. Because in May, that meant that these youngsters that had broken too soon were only yearlings because all the walls are born at the end of April. And of course, it's the experienced black wolf hiding in the shadow, knowing this worked, who was ready to take his time. But there again, we've got the equivalent of 16, 17, 18 year olds. You know the stage they're at, it's like, I know best, move out the way, I can do this, and they blow it. But that's natural development. So what I'm saying to you is to understand we need to appreciate. And you can prove this for yourself, because if you look at a puppy that is, as we say, a one-year-old human puppy, it is virtually the same size as the adult, height-wise, but not bulk. It is leaner, just as 
a gangly teenager can be in the human world. So once we understand this, we can look back over that first human year and realize just how much development there is going to be from the, the early stages in the den, the first three weeks, puppy doesn't even know it's a canine. And when it comes out, it is the vulnerability we have to look at. It's naivety. And this is why puppies will rush up to strangers or rush up to other dogs, rush up to anything, sort of, hey, look at me, because they are vulnerable, because they haven't yet been taught how to ignore or avoid this is something the adults do, just as we do. We teach our children, the little ones, to avoid strangers. We teach them stranger danger. And we don't just say on one occasion when they're two years old, human years, of course, you know, avoid strangers. We repeat it, we repeat it because we really want to keep them safe. So when we take our puppies out into the big wide world and they are wanting to investigate everything by keeping them with us and walking past certain things such as strangers other dogs cattle in a field we are teaching them how to behave in society so we are socializing them into the world they live in and when we understand this we can appreciate them there's another fact that this will just bring to the fore a little, and that is that in their world, not all choose to become leaders. Not all wolves choose to lead the pack. But we've got one thing on our side when it comes to convincing them that we are leader, and that is their intelligence. When they do choose to leave, they're around about 30 in our years. Is midway between the second human year and the third. So they're about 30 years of age. They've made the decision that they've learned enough to move on. Sounds familiar? Well, of course it does. But when they do this, it's because they know they've learned enough for the environment in which they live. But also the intelligence shows them when they're not familiar enough, when they cannot cope. And this is how we are able to step up and show them we're leader because we prove to them the world is very, very strange for them. It is out of their comfort zone and they will willingly work for us. So I hope you see how important it is to understand their development stages and then you are really able to help them. One more tick in the box for our desires. Thank you.